Hi, let's talk about physics constraints in stride. First, let's talk about what constraints are. A constraint is a connection between two rigid bodies, or one rigid body and the world, that describes a limitation on their movement within a dynamic physics simulation. Stride uses bullet physics engine to perform the calculations, which like they are you know, solving some linear equations um, that correct the velocity of the rigid body such that they can satisfy their position and rotation according to the constraints. There is a few types of constraints and we'll go over each of them in this video. A few common properties first. When we're talking about a pivot point, it's a point that is locally offset from the center of the mass of the rigid body's collider shape. So in stride you can have the collider shape offset from the center of the entity transform. So when you then look at the constraint, it's going to be from the center of that collider shape. And whenever I mention a constraint axis, um, if there's no rotation on the constraint, then it's the x-axis. And if we apply a rotation, then that will be the axis of trans when you rotate the x-axis in some way, uh, this would be the constraint axis. Uh, when it comes to limits, there are the following properties. If a lower limit is equal to the upper limit, the axis or the angle is fixed and there is no movement. If the lower limit is greater than the upper limit, then there is no limit. It, anything can happen. And if the lower limit is less than the upper limit, then the movement is limited within the range between lower and upper. Uh, and when we look at the angular limits, mm, the angle is in radians right, you know, right now. Uh, so we have from zero to, let's say, pi uh, when it comes to half of a uh, rotation. So the zero point, when we look at the um, rotation of the constraint, the zero point of the angle is the positive end of the z-axis. Okay, let me uh, show what I meant about the z-axis showing the, uh, the zero point of a limit. Right, if I go here to the zero, um, so here is the zero, right? And then as I increase, as, as I go further from the zero, the angle will increase up to pi, which is half a circle here on, on the negative end of the z-axis. Okay, let's get into the first constraint, point to point. Given a point, given a pivot point, we will try to keep the rigid body connected to that point. To create a point to point constraint with code, we need a frame of reference for each rigid body. And this frame is a translation matrix of the pivot points. Here's a few examples of point-to-point -point, uh, constraints. Okay, here we can see a cube that is anchored to the world in the point sig signaled by the sphere here. As you can see, um, the, the cube is like rotating slightly, anchored by this point, and it can move in whichever direction it wants, if I give it some momentum because it's only fixed within that one point. Next to it, we see two cubes that are fixed by an edge here. Sorry, not an edge, but like uh, the end, you know? So if I go ahead and give them some momentum, you can see that this one point stays fixed. Then here we have another two cubes that are connected in the middle. 
So if I give one some momentum, you can see them both move. However, um, it's just the point. So here, it, there's a point somewhere in here, and they can move in any way around this point so long as this point stays the same re relative to this cube and to this cube. And then over here we have a chain of cubes, each linked with the next one with a point-to-point -point constraint, and the head uh, has a script on it that makes it move up and down um, using some linear velocity. The second constraint that we'll look at is the slider constraint. Here we choose an axis along which the body will move and a pivot point um, relative to the body where the rail uh, will be. So to create a slider constraint with code, you need a frame for each body. And this frame here is first the rotation matrix, which rotates the unit x vector uh, to establish the constraint axis. And then it's multiplied with another matrix, the translation matrix of the pivot position. You can also set some limits uh, by accessing properties of the slider constraint. Um, there is linear limit, which is the movement along the constraint axis, and angular limit, uh, which is the rotation around the constraint axis. So let's start with the basic uh, slider. Here we have a uh, object that is sliding only across here, this axis and it has a limit uh, on the distance, so it doesn't go forever. Here we have, so this is like connected to the world, and those two objects are connected to each other. So again, if I do some movement, you can see there is a degree of freedom within the slider limit, but then if it's crossed, um, the objects will move each other. And I have disabled collision between them. And then look, let's look at some angular limits. So here, this one has uh, just no limit, but is, is allowed to, to rotate along the axis. And this one has the pivot point slightly outside, outside of the body and as an, a limit on the angle, so it only um, rotates within like 45 degrees left to right. Next up is the hinge. Here we choose a, an axis around which the body will rotate and the pivot point. To create a hinge constraint with code, you will call a specialized method, which will take the pivots and axis uh, of each body to create the proper frames. You can set limits on it as well using the set limit method and there is an angular limit uh, for the rotation around the axis. Right, here we have the basic um, cube to world um, and a hinge. The, the ones that are in the air are, are driven uh, by gravity here. This one in the middle had some impulse in, in the beginning to make it move. Um, pretty standard. Um, over here we see the same, but the, this is um, body to body and uh, the spheres are moving up and down while um, the cubes are under the hinge constraint. Uh, next up is the motor. So it's not only limits, but also motors. Uh, you can give some angular momentum um, or other angular velocity to the object and have it spin. And here I have an exam example of a limit. I have marked the, the limit angle on the ground. And when I throw the ball, we, as you can see, um, the cube is limited in its movement here. Uh, I saw that for the cube to world, um, it works better than cube to object. Um, there's less leeway. For the for breaking the limit in the cube to world, and also 
um, for the best results, um, try to keep the rotation of the constraint object at identity. Um, if they are slightly rotated, I'm not exactly sure what is the, the correct logic for the behavior there. Um, so it might need some experimentation to get right. Okay, well now let's look at the cone twist constraint. Uh, this one is very useful, especially for making ragdolls. We can choose here an axis uh, that the body can twist around and a pivot point. Um, we'll also be able to set limits on the swing. To create a cone twist constraint with code, you need a frame again uh, for each rigid body. And the frame is multiplication of the rotation matrix, which rotates the unit X vector to establish the constraint axis and a translation matrix for the pivot point. You can set limits by calling set limit method. Um, the first swing describes the angle of the swing along the X axis, sorry, along the Y axis, of course, relative uh, to the constraint axis. And the second swing span describes the swing in the Z axis, along the Z axis, again, relative to the constraint axis. And there is a twist span that describes uh, how the body can twist and rotate uh, along among uh, around the constraint axis. The thing to note here is that the twist span takes half of the angle and duplicates this angle on the other side of the of the body. So let's let's take a look at, uh, at how it looks here. So here I have a nice little gizmo I'm making that will make it easier to set up constraints. Um, so you can see here that as I move, this is 45 degrees, right? So from zero uh, here on the Z axis, it's 45 degrees to the right and 45 degrees to the left. Whereas, um, for example, the swing span, oh wait, actually swing span is the same here. Is it? No, no, it's not. Because yeah, see swing span is, is actually, this is the full angle. So here there's a difference. You can see that the twist span is twice as much as the swing span within the same value of the span. So let's take a look at a few different things here. So for example, if we have just the twist enabled, the movement uh, side to side is minimal and the object is rotating. Now I will limit the twist and allow for side to side movement on the Y axis. Now I will dis disable the twist and allow for limited movement on the Z. As you can see, initially the limit on the Z was broken, but the engine tried as much as it could to get the body into the range we provided it. And in this range, it can now um, more freely move. Uh, another constraint is the gear constraint. This one requires two bodies and you cannot rotate the world. Um, so the gear basically is about rotation. You choose an axis of rotation and a gear ratio. Uh, to create a gear constraint from code, you will create a frame such that this frame is a translation matrix of the rotation X axis. And you can set uh, the ratio by setting a property of the gear constraint. So as you can see, we have two disks 
and there is a gear constraint between them. Uh, this one has a hinge as well with a motor that makes it rotate, but this one is rotated entirely by the gear constraint. The ratio is two, so this one makes two turns for each one turn of this one. The last type of constraint is a generic six degrees of freedom constraint. You can use it to achieve the same result as a slider, a hinge, something in between, or more. Um, there's also a variant of this constraint that behaves like a spring. I'm not going to show you examples of that one because it's kind of harder, you know, in terms of usage. But you can figure out most of it based on what I've already shown about frames in Bullet. And, uh, and if you need one that's, you know, very free <laughs> uh, with six degrees of freedom, um, it can just do all the things. It has limits uh, on all, all axes and uh, all angles when it comes to rotation, so yeah. And it is it for this video. I hope I have uh, presented the constraints in a fairly clear way so that you can use them uh, in your project and soon there will be more videos with more advanced usages.